recording anyway, so we'll have it and we can post it afterwards. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Okay, so good evening all. I actually, um, before I call it to order, this is the first time I've seen anybody in the new year, so happy new year to everybody. And thank you for joining us. Um, we'll call our inclusivity and diversity advisory committee meeting of um, February 3rd to order. Uh, can I have roll call, please? Committee member Ro Nuasu. Um, committee member Brad Gray Eyes Brandt. Committee member uh, Aiden McGrath. Yeah. Committee member Rainer Brett. Present. Com committee member Ananda Nicholas. I'm here. Committee member Peter Shum. Good evening, everyone. And committee or and chair Lynn Grinstead. I am here. Adoption of our agenda, please. Uh, um, did you want to do the land acknowledgement, Lynn? Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm jumping. Yeah. I would like to begin by acknowledging that the land on which we work and gather is the traditional unceded territory of the Anishinaabe people. This Algonquin nation have lived on this land for thousands of years, long before the arrival of the European settlers, and we are grateful to have the opportunity to be present in this territory. So sorry. Adoption of the agenda, please. Be it resolved that the agenda for the Inclusivity and Diversity Advisory Committee meeting of uh, Thursday, February 3rd, 2022 be adopted. I need a mover and a seconder, please. I just wanna point out that there are two point 11s. Uh, for some reason, the second one doesn't have a page number on it, but page four is very short. And then there's this another page without a number on it that says number 11 adjournment. Okay. Okay. Okay, thank you. By show of hand, a mover and a seconder, please. Ananda and Rayner. Uh, any other comments? All in favor then? Yes, yes, thank you. Any disclosures of pecuniary interest? I don't believe so, I don't see any. Adoption of our previous minutes, please. Be it resolved that the minutes for the Inclusivity and Diversity Advisory Committee meeting of Thursday, December 2nd, 2021 be adopted. A mover and a seconder, please. Aiden and Brad. Brad, I don't believe you can because you weren't at that meeting. So I need somebody else, please. Ananda, anybody have any um, comments or uh, anything uh, regarding the minutes that they wanna bring up? Not seeing any, so all in favor. By show of hands, please, all in favor. Thank you. Um, so we have no presentations or delegations. We have three items on our matters table that are deferred. So the first one being our environmental scan, and that is our survey, I believe. Um, Robin, did you want to speak on this? Yeah, uh, thank, thank you, uh, Chair Grinstead. We did um, circulate the uh, version of the uh, survey that we prepared after our last meeting from feedback from the committee. So um, I think we sent it out. We didn't receive any comments that I'm aware of, Maureen, but if, uh, if everybody's um, satisfied with the wording and, um, and the layout of it, we'll, we'll turn it into a, a format that we can put online as an, an online version, as well as ha we'll have hard copies and we'll send out some, um, some uh, communication around how people can, uh, can get involved in that. And we'll, I would think we'd leave it open at least three weeks, maybe four weeks to gather feedback. We'll send it out. We send things out to all our committees, um, you know, contacts as we have that we can send it out. You're, you're, uh, you're welcome to send it to as many people as you can. We'll make sure you have a hard uh, uh, electronic version of it to, to share around as well and the link to our website to do that. So. Uh, to hear any comments people might have. Nanda? I'm sorry, I didn't realize that I needed to send feedback in the moment. Um, I just want to suggest that we add a reason, an explanation for why we're doing the survey, add a deadline as to when it will be released, and a deadline as to when we will continue accepting answers to it. Thank you, good points. So Robin, I assume that 
the reason would kind of be the introduction to, but maybe we should write that up and circulate it before we post it so that everybody can have their opinion or say in that as well. Absolutely happy to do that. And, and you're right, Ananda, we'll make sure that um, once we get that out, we'll give you maybe, a, we'll do that um, hopefully by the end of this week. We'll send it around to everybody, maybe ask for comments back within a week, and then we'll, um, we'll try and get that survey out um, around the, that would bring us around the 14th, middle of February, and um, have a deadline around maybe the 7th of March or something like that, just to give that, that time frame or the week after. So we'll make sure it's clear on there what the time frame is to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or questions regarding the survey? I printed it and went through it as if I was, you know, taking it online. And, and I thought the wording was, exact, you know, hitting where we were expecting it to hit um, after our last conversation. So thank you for that work to staff. Thank you. Okay, if there's no other, oh, Aiden, go ahead. I know we talked about this um, in the last meeting um, and we were, we had about concerns about, um, you know, listing racial categories and listing ethnicities. And um, I know we had agreed that it would be more easier from like a data analysis point of view to have like circle something or check a box. Or like, like just looking at the survey, I just find it really, I don't know. I just I don't like that the listing of all the races, races and ethnicities. I and at the same time, because like the other most of these questions, I feel would be or I guess one to ten. Uh, like if so, explain. Like there's going to be data that we have to read anyways. Do you think like we could just have a box for those things because as opposed to having it to be circled or checked or I don't know. Actually, if I could respond to that, uh, Chair Grinstead, um, I know at the last meeting, and it's included in my minutes, that questions three, four, and five, we were not going to use that list. I threw it back onto that just um, because I was doing a bit of copying and pasting, but we won't include those in questions three, four, and five. I believe it was Ananda who had uh, mentioned that, and there was definitely support given to that. Um, at the committee level. So questions three, four, and five will just be um, to, to answer or you can put prefer not to answer, so. Okay, thank you for clarifying that, Maureen. Thanks for noticing, Aiden. Thank you. Okay. I, also, I also have a question. One, one minute, Peter, please. Please just, can you just wait? Um, yeah. Brad had his hand up first, so if you could just raise your hand and wait for your turn, but I just wanted to comment, um, Robin, before I, go on to Brad, can we um, make sure that that is changed up? And when you send it all out to us with the with the um, reason and, and the introduction to it and everything that it is going to show us the form with which it will go out to the public. Please and thank you. Brad, you're up next, sorry. Um, yeah, just um, <clears throat> regardless of however it's categorized, uh, just something that jumped out at me, just looking at it, I realized, um, Maybe there's a reason, but have uh, Inuk and Inuit at the same time. Um, like one is singular, one's plural. And to me, I mean, it could be incorrect, but to me, that seems kind of like saying First Nation or First Nations. Right. But I guess because Maureen's pulling those all out anyways, and people are just going to um, write down their own, um, their own. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Brett. Yeah. So I think that we, we will cover that off, right? Okay. Okay, makes sense. Peter, you're up next. Okay, I'm sorry, I didn't That's remember. Okay. I should have raised my hand first. Um, my question is, um, question 27, it's a little bit confusing. If I were, if I put myself in the position of the person being asked, um, I would not understand clearly what it means it says, what actions would you want to see implemented to revise? Uh, it's the word revise that I'm having problem understanding. Uh, you cannot revise history uh, unless the history is wrong. And if it was wrong, then restore or accurately reflect already covered that. So 
the, the word revise by itself could be uh, construed to mean uh, modifier to make, what, make it fit what one person wants it to fit. To me, that's not right. So I, I think it's just the key word is to accurately reflect. So I don't know if the word revise is misleading or not. I actually had that circled as well because I um, I was going to uh, mention that after everybody had their say. So can we just kind of um, talk about that, Robin, and, and maybe the reason for that word in there? Because Peter's right. Re regardless of our history, and some of it is not history that we appreciate or condone or whatever, it is still history and we can't rewrite history. You're muted, Robin. Sorry, I was reading it over again myself, just to yeah. be clear. What actions would you want to see implemented to revise, restore, or accurately reflect Arm Prior's history? I don't think you can re revise for sure. So could we just maybe um, um, remove the revise or restore and just say what actions? Accurate. Pardon? And just say see implemented to accurately reflect Arm Prior's yeah. history? Yeah. Sure. I would agree with that. Does anybody have any other suggestion or thought on that, Aiden? I just feel like that question is very vague. Mm -hmm. um, like, I'm, I'm not even really sure what, what people, like, if I were to see that, what I would even say. Mm -hmm. I don't, um, like, is there something that we're wanting to learn more about that impacts marginalized groups in, on, in armed prayer and is related to armed prayer's history. That's, I, I just don't understand. I don't, I'm not really sure what the purpose of that question is for. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, I think you're probably pretty close there. And I think it might be around the idea that um, if there was some inaccurate representation of our history that, um, that we wanted to reflect, I'm just trying to think of an example um, yeah, I, I can't think of anything off the top of my head, particularly for Arm Prior, but perhaps there is something um, that, uh, you know, that, that we're not doing a good job of representing. I'm just wondering, I, I don't know, maybe nobody will, will, will be able to answer anything there. And we can remove the question if you think it's too vague. Um, we really, you know, gathered questions from other municipalities that had put out surveys and some of them are larger. Um, and maybe a little bit more historical than the town. Um, so, you know, if you just don't think it, it really fits and, and won't provide any uh, good answer, we can, we can remove, we're, we're flexible. I don't know if removing it is, is um, the answer. I, I, I get what you're saying, Aiden. I do feel it's very vague too, but that being said, there might be someone out there that has a lot of uh, emotion of, something that has been um, portrayed as history here that is not accurate. So I think by leaving it there and leaving it open that maybe we would have somebody answer that. I know my partner has a lot to say about a few, a few of our forefathers of this town and um, cause there is some, there is some not good history with uh, uh, some of, you know, the founding fathers of Arm Prior and whatnot. So, and McNabb, Brayside and whatnot. So I think as vague as it is, it might hit us, uh, uh, hit somebody differently than it's hitting us because maybe our age or I don't, I'm, I'm not a history buff, so I don't know a lot of history, but maybe somebody will point something out to us that would be of use. That's just my thought. Does anybody else have a thought on this particular, uh, Ananda? I just wanted to second Peter's suggestion of just removing the word revise because accurately you can't revise history. Um, I also do agree with Aiden that we could possibly just remove it, but I do understand there may be value to be had there. Brad? Yeah. Um... Yeah, just, just to kind of go on that, I mean, I do a lot of surveys in my work and, and uh, business, and some of them, we do leave open-ended qualifications like that, uh, because there is a lot of insight they can gain specifically from the open-ended questions, because and the kind of thing I've looked for before in businesses are, 
the people that deliberately like will go on for a long time because they're usually a barometer for uh, larger things and they actually can speak for a large groups of people. So there is a lot of insight to be gained from really vague open-ended questions as long as um, you don't try to view it like a qualitatively if you're, if you're looking for a particular thing. So there, there can be some value from the really vague ones that I've, I've found throughout work. Okay, thank you. Peter, you you uh, had your hand up again. Did, did we hit what you were wanting or do you have another question? Well, I thought of one question, for example, one possibility that there might be things that are not currently uh, reflected in the Ambra history. For example, um, I don't want to use any other groups to offend people or whatever. For example, if there were people know of and have evidence or to back it up, that there was somebody from argument, for argument's sake that came from China and contributed to the development of an prior and that uh, uh, he made some significant or meaningful contributions, but it was never mentioned up to now in an prior's history. And somebody might bring it up and say, wait, 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 I know of a John Doe who did this and so on and so forth. And then if it's proven to be accurate, then it could be uh, refracted in the history. So there is value in having this question. Uh, having said that, I do recognize that after so many years, such a scenario is probably not very uh, likely, but the possibility is still there. So I'm just saying that that's, that's such a scenario because you asked earlier, is there any possibility that there might be situations like that? And I think that might be one of those situations. Right, thank you. So I think uh, I think what I'm hearing is that I personally think that we should leave the question in, and and I don't think there's any argument to you know to take it out for sure, but but definitely to take the word out revised because we can't revise history. Everybody agree? Perfect. Any other questions or concerns about any of the questions on the survey? Great. So then we'll just wait for Robin and staff to send us out the finalized version with that little intro um, with our reasoning and timelines and stuff. Thank you so much. Next on our list is the cultural event and Graham's here to speak to us on that. Thank you, Chair Grinstead. Um, so when we had our last meeting um, before the holidays, we, we, we talked about, um, I think in the previous meeting before that, um, Roe had raised uh, the, the, the idea of a, a night market that seemed to be well received by the group and, and wanting to have a cultural event like that, that kind of celebrated, um, you know, the different uh, food um, and entertainment um, and different types of things that vendors could bring to an event of that nature. So we did start to explore that. Um, and then in the new year, uh, it was brought to our attention that there was a, a grant that became available. Now, unfortunately, we at least were, um, you know, the committee's input would be concerned. Um, this grant was due for submission prior to uh, this, this committee meeting. However, it is pretty generalized in terms of what actually would happen at this event. It's more just in an effort to, to look to, to gather funding that would allow us to really launch an event like this. So if you could just bear with me for a few minutes, I do want to kind of just review what, um, what this grant program is about, um, what the eligibility requirements are, and just highlight some of the things that we did incorporate into, into our grant application. So um, it's, it's the My Main Street grant. So My Main Street uh, Community Activator provides uh, support for community projects uh, in Ontario, and it's designed to, to, to draw visitors to uh, an increased local vibrancy. So communities continue to um, adapt from COVID-19. So this program provides uh, support for projects to seek to revitalize neighborhoods, uh, reimagine public spaces uh, that would include main streets, downtown strips, plazas, um, as vibrant and inclusive places that work for everyone. Um, so that's 
when I get into it a bit later, it does kind of focus on our downtown, which is where we've already had, you know, our farmer's market. And, and so I think we have a good framework as to how a market could work in, in that respect. So my main street supports placemaking as an approach that asks people to collectively reimagine and reshape public space to maximize its shared value. Placemaking can take uh, the form of events that draw people into a community, murals that brighten uh, neglected streetscapes and celebrate local artists, seating and temporary patios that allow to gather safely outdoors, new uses for neglected or empty spaces and more. So funding uh, is prioritized for projects that support sustainable placemaking strategies for their geographic area and that are designed to support economic and social benefits for equity seeking groups, including Francophone, women, indigenous, racialized groups, black communities, newcomers, youth, people living with disabilities, the unhoused, low income people, trans or non-binary people, and or LGBTQ+. And funding for this grant program ranges between 25,000 and $250,000 provided as reimbursements against completed work. Excuse me, just a moment here, I gotta switch pages. Um, so the eligibility for, uh, for this, so it looks to support local placemaking projects that make meaningful differences in local communities, drawing people out, strengthening feelings of connection and inclusion, and spurring economic activity. The program will provide support for 140 projects with 25% supporting communities with populations of 100,000 or less. Support will be provided in the form of reimbursements against incurred costs, funding for placemaking projects that are planned, completed or underway in 2022 with reimbursements offered for work completed between January 1 and December 31st of this year. So, just in reading through, um, you know, what My Main Street is about and the eligibility, there was a lot of language in there that I think really struck a chord that we had things that we had heard coming from the previous committee meetings. And then when when Roe first kind of brought the the idea of the night market to our attention um, and, and kind of what would be behind an event of that nature, uh, staff felt this is a perfect thing for us to uh, grant for us to try and apply to. To, to really allow us uh, a good kind of foothold to launch something like this. Not to say we can't capably do it within our own resources, um, but this certainly would give us a, a really good, um, you know, first step forward. Um, so the, the project as, um, as presented in the grant application, um, it was called a quaint night market which is a multicultural night market hosted in the community of Armprior. It will feature food vendors, artisans, and entertainers from various ethnicities, an opportunity for uh, attendees to become more acquainted with neighbors and the diverse cultural backgrounds they come from. The intention is to host an evening that provides a welcome space for all members of the community and visitors to participate in an evening of food, film, art, and music. A space where the diversity of the community will be celebrated. Uh, a quaint night market will provide a chance for people to gather once again to reconnect, but to also become acquainted with neighbors, new Canadians, and possibly new cultures. The event is a cultural night market that will be held on a Saturday in August. Um, and we were targeting the last Saturday in August, which would be the 27th um, in the town of Armpire's historic downtown. And this would be something that we uh, target to run from four until 11 p.m. Um, on the main street that would be closed so that we can house the various food vendors, artisans, art activations, and performances. So, of course, it would mirror much of what we do uh, for our Sunday farmers market and kind of closing that section of John Street North down between Rock Lane and, and Elgin Street. Uh, so the area will be uh, populated with art installations, placemaking modular seating in the hopes of reigniting the traditions of the tradition of community gatherings. A centralized stage will be will provide a platform for musicians and storytellers from a variety of backgrounds to showcase their talents. For businesses on Main Street who continue on their long road to financial recovery, this increase in traffic will be welcomed 
an opportunity to gain new patrons from this captive audience. For vendors who are often otherwise limited by the costs associated with brick and mortar businesses, it will provide a space to drive their revenue at a nominal charge um, and subsidies being available for that. Um, in the intention of creating a welcoming barrier-free event, there would be no charge uh, to attend this event. This project is seen as being the launch pad for an annual event that we would have going forward and provide a framework not only for future editions of this night market, but for similar events to be hosted um, in the town of Armprior. With grant funding, this project could create short-term, full-time, and part-time positions while extending employment of other seasonal staff within the town of Armprior, and of course, utilizing uh, the volunteer base uh, that we often see when major events uh, of a similar nature do come to town. So the total grant request that was put forward uh, was totaled at $41,350. And just kind of the, the rough breakdown of that uh, would include 17,000 for event equipment um, and supplies. And that's heavily focused on, on the art side of things. $7,000 for marketing, 3,000 for entertainment and $14,000 uh, for staffing. Now, I do wanna highlight the entertainment one because I think at first glance, people would say, well, that's, that's awfully low. So one of the ineligible expenses for this would be if we had musical, is, is any of the musical performers. So it's not to say that we wouldn't have them included in this event, but that just simply would be a cost that would not be covered by the grant. So that's something that we either have to do within our own operations budget or in getting event sponsors uh, that would help cover the costs of that type of entertainment. So that was just, there was a few um, things like that in the grant that just says, no, you, you, can't, uh, you can't use funds for this. Um, so that's kind of the, um, I'll say the Coles Notes version of what was, of what was submitted uh, for this grant. And of course, if, if successful uh, with this application, uh, then immediately we'd, we'd be coming back to this committee and saying, all right, now we, we need to, uh, Kind of really get our brainstorming going here to determine really what we want this uh, what we want this to look like and what we want this event to reflect. Thank you, Graham. Can you tell me again the hours that you had said? So yeah, four, yeah. Sorry, four p.m. until eleven p.m. Okay. Ananda. So this uh, application has already been submitted. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Yeah, the application deadline. Uh, was at midnight on February 1st. So unfortunately, um, it just wasn't something, you know, it came to our attention early in, in the new year. We haven't had a meeting since before, before the holidays. Um, and we didn't want to waste this opportunity. We did speak to um, uh, the My Main Street organizers to see if there was any way we can do extensions or anything like that. And unfortunately, that was, that was not the case. My understanding, though, is that it's fluid, right, Graham, that we... Abs that, yeah. Absolutely. And that was kind of the approach that we did take. And, and we did review that um, uh, kind of with, with the grant um, organizers just to make sure that, I mean, what we submitted, that we were giving them the information that they wanted and that we were giving ourselves um, a fair chance at this grant. And one of the nice things about uh, this grant, uh, unlike a lot of others, um, there was a... Uh, not just a word count, but a character count limit um, in, in the answers to all the questions. Um, and the nice thing about that and the reason or their justification for it is just to make sure that different organizations, uh, groups, municipalities that would be applying for the grant that typically don't have grant writers or people who have experience um, you know, in that realm, that the, the playing field remain level because you have, you know, some answers, you had 500 characters, that includes spaces. <laughs> so uh, it's kind of like, what would you put in a tweet, um, which was actually one of the, the questions, like, basically, if you had, you know, uh, 144 characters or 250, whatever Twitter is now, um, to describe your event, right? So um, it was it was very unique in that and, and kind of a, a strategic approach that we took in knowing that, look, at they're going to be, uh, you know, 25% of their, their, their funds uh, will be earmarked to 
two communities of under 100,000. Um, so, I mean, obviously that, that targets us. And when you see a grant range kind of 25,000 to 250 K, I mean, sure. We don't, I mean, it, we could really put something pretty crazy together for 250 K, but then you have to ask yourself, like, where does that put you uh, in the competition with all those other submissions? Right. So uh, I think what was put together um, checked all the boxes in terms of what they were, what they were looking for. Um, it's quite fair. And, and it also, I think, keeps it sustainable for us. I think a lot of the costs that were, were put in there gives us a great opportunity to get this going for the first time and costs that would not have to be incurred in years going forward because we have certain pieces of, of equipment and supplies um, already. Uh, we have the experience of running this exact event um, and maybe more elements of it can be brought in house. And then the fact that you know, given uh, the success I would expect it would have, you're then going to have another opportunity to gain uh, more revenue in terms of getting sponsors that want to come to the table and other groups that want to come forward and say, hey, I'd like to, to, to have visibility at this event. So whether they're sponsoring it or donating their services, uh, services et cetera, um, that's how we've seen other events that have kind of grown in their success um, in town, such as Prior Palooza, right? So... And then it also gives us a, a start point for it to grow years to come. Like, I think, I think we all got excited and, and I know that they were talking about multi-day and whatnot, but I think to start with a one day event uh, and, you know, fine tune what you want to do and then grow from there when, when we have it under our belt. Yes, we were, we, we definitely, um, you know, we kind of looked at a, a lot of different things that we could do. And I mean, we wanted to also be very sensitive and, and respectful in terms of what we were putting forward in the application, because, you know, we didn't want it to be our voice. This is an idea that came from, from this committee. So, you know, we want, we want your feedback. So, you know, there's nothing that has been committed to beyond saying, here's an event that we want to do. We picked a, a Saturday in late August where we felt there's limited um, competition in terms of what's happening immediately in Empire, um, throughout the Valley into the city. I mean, there's always going to be events in the city, but nothing major along these lines that we felt would, um, would impact this or, and whether that's impacting vendors that you want to come entertainers or just people that you, you do want to visit the community. So, uh, we did keep it at a very high level that kind of gives us that flexibility to, to really make this, um, really whatever, whatever we want. Hey, I see somebody has their hand up, but I just one one quick question before I forget. When will we know whether we are, were successful or not with this grant? Uh, we'll know by by April first. And is that enough time then for us to pull it all together? Yeah. So as part of this, we did have to kind of submit a work plan. Um, so I mean, I kind of used the the date that you would be finding out as kind of uh, just kind of a, a rough starting point um, in in terms of where we would go from there. Um, I, I don't see why it wouldn't give us uh, sufficient time to, to put something to put something like this together. So, awesome. Okay, Rainer, you have a question. I just want to say, nice job, Graham, and this is fantastic. Great, Great Thank job. You. Thank you. Thank you, Ananda. I just wanted to inquire about um, if, for some reason, this grant doesn't get approved, and I second what Rainer was saying. Excellent job, Graham. Thank you. Um, what funding would potentially be available to pay for performers and or vendors, so on and so forth. Unfortunately, a lot of um, people that I think that would be wonderful to have at this book up early, you know, um, from April to August, they may already be booked for August. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something we really need to take into consideration. There is, a, I mean, yes, it could just be a market, but to not have some kind of performances happening, um, I think would really take away from the event. Sure. So a um, couple of things with that. First to, to the comments from both yourself and, and Rainer, I, I do also want to, to give credit to my colleague, Erin Coyle, who's our acting marketing and economic development officer. She put uh, a, a ton of, a ton of effort into this. So I feel like I'm, I'm speaking a lot on, on her behalf because she put a lot of uh, a time into this application. So to, to your question, yes, if we if we don't get the the grant, 
Um, I know there, there is a, a budget line within marketing and economic development um, uh, for events, as well as in recreation for new events, uh, where we could look to, to fund some of this. And again, we would, like any event that we have, Canada Day, Prior Palooza, our Dragon Boat Festival, um, even our, our, our Family Day Festival that we have coming up later this month, um, we always reach out to the business community to, to look for, for sponsorship um, or support in, in a variety of ways. Um, so I, I think we could, we could certainly get that. Um, and as I said earlier, I'm kind of going through, uh, going through the budget. I mean, I think there's just certain elements that we'd say, well, maybe we, maybe we don't do this. Maybe we don't buy, um, you know, tents and stuff like that. We just, kind of work with the resources that we already have instead of buying or getting some modular seating made well we'll just um we'll get the the town truck and trailer and we'll we'll pillage some picnic tables from robert simpson park and other parks and and line the streets with that and, and that'll kind of be the seating setup that we have for the the first go at this so i think there's ways to work within um the infrastructure uh, and staffing and equipment and everything that we already have in place um, and then within the operating budget and then community support to still make it meaningful. Now, the other side um, too, to what you were saying about, you know, are some of these vendors, um, artisans, entertainers, are they already booked up? They, they very well could be. Um, we are finding that, uh, you know, a lot of people are, uh, you know, still have open calendars because no one knows what's, <laughs> no one knows what's happening. Events that were planned for, for April are being pushed off till, you know, June and July. Uh, when we're all just kind of hedging our bets and hoping, hoping that we're in a, a more normal setting. Um, and again, we're not committed um, to this date, at least in terms of the, the grant, if we feel that, hey, maybe it's better that we do it, you know, the third weekend in October or in September, um, because that's a better time to do it, then, you know, we certainly have that, that flexibility to do that. So that for sure would be something um, that will come out of that planning process. Um, and I mean, we can already start to put some preliminary feelers out there. Um, and I know Erin is, is very well connected uh, to a lot of groups within the city of Ottawa from, from her experience working with, uh, with major events at, uh, at TD Place. So um, in that respect, um, and just <laughs> the confidence I have in her, I'm not too worried that we, we can't make uh, you know, a real goal of this event, whether we have this, this grant funding or not. So... I just, uh, maybe this question for Robin or, or you, I think that um, to me as counsel, do we need to maybe uh, have you, Graham, bring it as a staff request uh, back by this committee that we earmark this day and that, you know, you're obviously going to tell counsel uh, about this uh, grant that you've applied for, but maybe right now we need to um, have a plan B if we don't like, just like what you just said, but so we should be booking the day. We should be starting to book some entertainment, um, and looking for sponsors or whatnot, because as you said, it's not covered under this anyways. So, um, and I think that we should go to, go to council with a request for, a, a, an amount of an, a budget whether it be coming out of your new events or whatever, I don't know if you need council's approval for that or whatnot, but a plan B, let's put a plan B in place so that we can start creating the, the event and starting to book the, the people that this committee really has in mind to show, you know, to bring forth the different uh, cultures that we want um, to, um, what's the word I'm looking for, highlight. And, and whatnot, like, you know, um, it's musical, but, you know, you want a, an element for kids as well. So whether it be, you know, some kind of um, storytelling or, or children's music or, or whatnot, um, along with your vendors, but also your food. So I'm just thinking, like, we have a, a couple of amazing uh, different um uh, restaurants here in town that are ethnic that are that that I'm sure will come to the table but who else do we want to fill in and, and stuff like that so I it's the next step while we're waiting for this grant not to get uh, council's way in on this and, and and the green light go so that this committee can feel like they're you know able to make these plans 
Um, maybe uh, maybe I can take that one, Graham, and, and speak to that a little bit, Councillor Grinstead. I think um, two things. When when we apply for a grant, typically, uh, if it's one that uh, is 100% funded, like this would be, once we get confirmation, we would do a report to Council saying, hey, we've applied for this grant, we've been successful, here's our plan on how we're going to move that forward. But I think you're right. Either way, you know, we work out our, our summer market program. I think we, we can identify, you know, maybe instead of a Sunday market, one of these is the, the night market. And it's, it keeps it, as uh, Graham suggested, within our operational budget for this year. And um, I, I think as we get closer to planning our markets, we, we would report to council and say, here's our plan for this, this summer. We haven't had a market in two years, of course, because of COVID. So you know, I think I'd like to make sure council is aware we're going forward with markets this year and what our plan is for that sooner and I think you're right, sooner rather than later, so that we can start generating the buzz. And so, you know, if people are aware of artists that they might want to um, key in on or suggest that they um, that they think about joining us, you know, now's the time to start start giving those dates and ideas to people. So the sooner we can nail down a date, the better, I think, for that reason. But yeah, absolutely, we'll, we'll go to council and uh, get support around the idea. Yeah. Um. Sorry, Green. Just one second. So. Sure. I'm just thinking, and, and I mean, obviously, I don't know what I don't know, but I, and I'm trying to to think, but I'm just thinking, like, you know, we want to book people, like, um, and I'm just thinking, like, someone that can come in and maybe do hennas, and and you know, like, like, there's all kinds of different things that will help in the education as well as the inclusion and and all of that. So definitely, um, I think sooner than later, I think, and also to just for the community and this committee to have a sense that we actually have something amazing that's coming from this, that's coming this year, you know? So I think I think to create the buzz and to start it is good. Graham, you had a comment before I uh, go to Ananda. Sure, yeah, no, just to say that if, if, if any committee members do have ideas of, you know, entertainment, uh, vendors, artisans, anyone that they're connected to, that they've seen elsewhere, um, that they'd like to be, um, you know, a part of this event. I mean, feel free to send them my way and, and, and Aaron and Lucas and I can, can kind of start that, uh, you know, an initial outreach and at least kind of, you know, put the date out there um, and then see what the, you know, see what the response is. And I mean, uh, anytime you're planning events, I mean, uh, sometimes you, you, you got to just, you're, you're married to your date, you stick to your date unless you really find out that no one can come. Um, but I mean, some, some people just won't be able to make it. They're on vacation. They're committed elsewhere. Uh, that's the reality. But I mean, I think there's a lot of, 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 of groups um, in this area um, that can, can make this a successful event. But yes, please uh, share any contacts you have, any ideas you have. Because um, to Ananda's point, the, the sooner we can reach out, the better. Um, because some people may already be committed and, and at least we we know that and then we can kind of move on to two alternative options thank you ananda i just wanted to ask um if we should be reaching out to individuals ourselves and direct them to you graham or if the town is open to possibly reaching out to for example uh the pride organizations here in town, uh, any of the ethnic restaurants, which we luckily have many of now, mm -hmm. perhaps some of the local drummers and hoop dancers, and uh, or if we should do that ourselves. I mean, if you if you have that, if you have that connection, and, and you feel comfortable reaching out to that person, and whether you copy me on the email, or just have them reach out to to myself or Aaron, then then absolutely. I mean, that. Uh, you know, if, if you already have, a, you know, a connection or a foot in the door, so to speak, then I mean, that just uh, helps the process along that much more. So um, and, and if you don't and you, it's just it's more of an idea than it is a connection, then, yeah, just send it our way and we'll we'll make that first point of contact. I was just thinking if you had some sort of um, boilerplate, for lack of a better word, uh, intro that you were planning on using some sort of verbiage that you would like us to use when we reach out um, that that would be good for us to have on hand uh, so that we don't misrepresent things. Um, I personally do have a couple of connections, but I don't want to overstep my bounds. And I know um, if we are all on the same page right out of the gate, that would be a really good starting point. 
Sure. So, you know, I, I mean, I, I think it'd be quite easy for, for Aaron and I to, to put something like that together based on the, the, the content that was put into the grant application. Um, that'd be a really good uh, kind of boilerplate, as you said, um, for, for outreach. So um, happy to do that. And we could probably turn that around uh, by, by next week at the latest. Uh, the only thing I would want to just kind of be sure of from a committee perspective um, is that people are kind of just comfortable with kind of the, the, the general terms of things that were discussed here this evening, just to make sure that whatever's captured in that boilerplate um, is seen as fair and representative of, of what we would eventually envision this, this event becoming. Because as I said, we, we, we did put this application together at a very, um, at a very high level. Uh, we didn't commit to anything uh, specific because it wasn't, um, it wasn't our event to, to dream up. We wanted the committee's feedback and input to kind of guide us and direct us in, in what you want it to be. And then it's kind of our jobs and responsibilities to, to kind of help, um, you know, bring all that to fruition. I think you, uh, I think you captured the essence of, of what we discussed in the last couple of meetings fairly well. Like you said, it's fluid. It, you know, we can add, we can subtract, we can do things around. So I think the essence of what, uh, of how you explained it, I believe is, is um, reflect what we had been talking about all along. The one thing I do want to um, suggest, uh, I, I, as a counselor, I would be pretty adamant, um, but it, I'm just one vote, but that we pull as much of our entertainment, food, um, all of anything we're doing, we pull it from as locally as possible because we need to, we need as council, as a town to support, to, to support local before we go to people in the city. And if we can't get it local, but we can get it within the county. I, again, I think that that is an important message that we're sending to our, um, to our community is, is that we're supporting local because we can't just talk the talk without walking the walk. So I think it's very important that we do as much of all of this as locally as possible. Amanda? I just wanted to suggest that we change the wording on film in the grant for our boilerplate to multimedia. Um, saying film is quite limiting when it could be anything from street art to sidewalk chalk. I mean, there's a lot of different multimedias that could be put to use. That's good. Oh, great point. And, and just so you know, where the, the film was included in there, um, that was more for um, an, an effort to engage uh, the O'Brien Theatre, um, you know, in, in that aspect of the event, because they are part of the downtown, they are a movie theatre, and what type of content could they, could they use in there. Um, there is lots of other um, elements of, of kind of what was put into that grant that would speak to didn't use the term multimedia. I think that's a great, uh, great word for us to use in, in the boilerplate. Um, but things like, you know, that type of um, artistic design that we could use, whether it is if we can do something with murals, um, I, I think that would be fantastic. It would really be, I think, make that downtown vibrant. And there's some great areas where it might be possible if, if local businesses were on board. Um, but I think you're right, we could do some really cool stuff, even with sidewalk chalk, just to engage, uh, you know, the, the youth and young families as, as part of something like this. So yeah, great idea. I am also envision this, that maybe we speak to Stan at Shoppers and request that section of that his part, like his parking lot as part of our footprint for that, that evening, I think would be very important. Well, as, as, as and that's a great point, uh, Chair Grinstead, because I, I know when, when Roe first kind of brought the idea forward and, and she referenced when uh, that film was being shot in downtown and how they closed that section of the parking lot off and they did kind of have like a, a food truck and vendor type thing as part of that film. Um, and it really looked cool in there. Um, so, I mean, absolutely. If that's something that, um, um, that, that Stan would be on board with, I mean, I think it would just, would just add to the event and, um, just to a, a comment that was, I think, made by Robin earlier, just about kind of working within our, our, our market. And the nice thing is that by doing this on a Saturday evening, um, you know, maybe there's elements of, of this event that can then tie into um, the, the Sunday market as well, right? So 
Um, we didn't want to bite off more than we could chew the first go with this and have a multi-day market, but because we're tying it into that weekend, perhaps it could lend itself uh, also into like a, the full weekend, just into our, our, our more traditional farmer's market that we have on Sundays. Perfect. Um, so you said last Saturday, I think in August, I think that's a, I think that would be a great time just before kids go back to school. It's, you know, um, so I have that as the 27th, correct? That Rick? is correct. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Any other comments? Okay. Very good. It's exciting. Exciting. So Kareem, you will keep us uh on tap with what we have to keep what we have to do next and where we're supposed to be as we move forward correct correct yeah and we'll work on a boilerplate and we'll try and get something out uh, as i said to to the group by by end of next week at the latest and um, that can be something again that you can share with with your contacts and communities to to see who is interested or has any other feedback or ideas that they want to share with us as well thank you so very much awesome isn't this exciting? Very exciting. Okay. Um, next on our list is our vision, mission, and vision, mission, and goals. And it is unfortunate that Jody is not with us tonight um, because her expertise is, is very well used in this one. Can I, maybe I can just lead a bit of discussion on this. And it is unfortunate Jody's not here because um, she's the, the master of. Uh, of this kind of project or this kind of exercise. So, you know, it was great that she shared um, the worksheet with us. I don't know if anybody submitted it back or if you just wanted to maybe discuss it a little bit. I know this meeting, you know, you try and keep it to an hour and we don't have much time left because no. it takes up a, a lot of our time. So I don't know if you want to get into it tonight and discuss some of these questions or if you want to take some more time and wait till Jody's here to facilitate a discussion around it. We're totally at at the committee's mercy as to, you know, how, how I think it's, I think it's almost its own meeting as far as the level of detail that in depth you want to get into around a discussion of all these questions. So um, again, I'm at your mercy, but if, uh, if you want to put it off till next meeting, um, it's up okay. to you. Anyway. So um, I actually, Rainer, uh, Maureen just sent me Rainer's uh, submission, and I honestly didn't submit mine because I thought it was a worksheet that we were going to share together. Rainer, with your permission, can we send it to the rest of the committee? Yes. Okay. So if Maureen, maybe, because you're right, Robin, we are at our, at our time, and we want to be conscious of this, especially with Ananda ha having, um, being solo with her kids tonight and everything. How about Maureen will share Rainer's. Um, I know I was writing notes and stuff. I'm not quite as, um, as uh, graphic. Uh, you, you have your graphics here and everything, Rainer, and it looks amazing. Um, so maybe if we share Rainer's and then other the rest of us can follow up um, again mean I didn't know that we were sharing them like this so um, then maybe we can all share ours uh, send ours to Maureen before the next meeting and then maybe it could be part of our uh, agenda package so that everybody can see everybody's and then our conversation is more fluid that night because we you know, it won't be a back and forth. We'll have seen them and then we'll be able to go from there. What, how does that sound? Robin, does that sound about? Whatever's, whatever's works for the committee, that makes sense to me. Yeah, Ananda? First, I appreciate the consideration. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to say that um, according to my notes from our first meeting that we set an end time as 8 p.m. as the latest that any meeting would go. Oh, okay. And uh, secondly, I thought that we had decided that we were waiting for the survey results to finish putting together our vision and mission statement. Okay, I, I don't remember that specific, but um, again, they're all, I thought that this was a pretty fluid exercise as well in conjunction, but, but um, that's all, that's got all good. Um, so I think, um, if we could do what, what I had suggested, um, each still work on our notes and, and share them when we feel that we have what we want. Rainer's it would be, um, to me, Rainer, Rainer's 
I just looked at it very quickly because Maureen just sent it to me just before the meeting started. And so I haven't been able to read it all, but it I know it helps me to, you know, because whenever you see somebody else's, it always helps you to formulate some ideas of your own as well. So, so feeding off of each other will be very good. Um, and then we will have this for the next meeting. This, the uh, surveys then wouldn't quite be finished by the next meeting. So we won't really have them until the April meeting, correct? Robin, yeah. Uh, pretty much, yeah, but you know, but again, I think, yeah. think still working on it as a fluid concept, I think we would still have maybe narrow down some ideas. And then when the survey is completely uh, completed and, and back to us, then our narrow down ideas might take another shape or they might be totally in line with, with what we're um, being fed back by the surveys. Does that make sense? I, I think what, um, what Jody had explained was that uh, the <clears throat> vision and mission you could go ahead with, the goals would be more reflective of when the survey results came in. Right. Awesome. Okay, so Maureen, if you would be so kind as to share Rainer's um, submission with everybody else. And then as we complete them, maybe we send them into Maureen so that she can share them with the rest of the committee. And then, like I said, the, the goal would be for all of us to have them submit it before um, the week before the next meeting, because then Maureen can have them um, and attach them to um, our minutes for the next, not our minutes, sorry, our agenda for the next meeting. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so very much. Um, okay, so we have no staff reports. We have no new business. So we are going to go to adjournment, please. That the meeting of the Inclusivity and Diversity Advisory Committee be adjourned at 7.29 p.m. A mover and a seconder, please. Rainer and Brad. All in favor? Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. It was nice to see you all, and we'll see you in a month's time. Good night.